welcome to our cafe. Big cook, little cook, want you to come and play. Welcome to our cafe, the best cafe in the world. <laughs> well, at least I think it's the cafe. I went exploring and I got lost. <laughs> but Ben told me if ever I got lost in the cafe to stand still and wait for him. So I'm not going to get worried. I'm just going to stand still and wait. <laughs> oh, that sounded like the door opening. I wonder if it's Ben. Ben! Ben! Oh, hello everyone. Have you seen Small? Ben, I'm lost! Oh, that sounded like Small. I'm lost! Oh, hello, Small! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to startle you. What are you doing? I'm lost! Well, I'm not surprised you're lost in amongst all this stuff. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand. There you go, Small. Thanks, Ben. Oh, there it goes again. Sounds like we've got a customer. Better go and see who it is. I'm on my way. Woohoo! <laughs> Who's in the cafe today, Small? I'll give you a clue. It's not one customer, it's two! <laughs> mm. Oh, Jack and Jill? Oh, no, it's not Jack and Jill, but it is a boy and a girl. And they got lost just like I did. Oh, I know, I know. It's Hansel and Gretel. A boy and a girl who got lost in the woods. That's right, Hansel and Gretel! Well, they must be hungry. They rang the hatch bell twice. <laughs> yes, once for Hansel and once for Gretel. <laughs> I think it's time to look in my book. We need a story to help us cook. Let's take a look in Little Cook's book. Little Cook's adventures in the big world. Let me see. Once upon a time, there were two children called Hansel and Gretel. Each day, their father said to them, Hansel and Gretel, you can play, but only in the garden. This is a big wood and you mustn't go into it, otherwise you will get lost. But one day, Hansel was bored playing in the garden. Let's go and explore in the wood, he said. But father said we would get lost, said Gretel. Oh no, we won't, said Hansel. I have a clever plan. I'm going to leave a trail of bread so we can find our way home. Hansel and Gretel merrily skipped deeper and deeper into the wood, leaving their trail behind them. Soon they came to a little cottage. It was made out of bread and cakes, and the windows were made of sweet, clear sugar. Hansel and Gretel couldn't believe their luck. They were very hungry after their long walk and began to eat. Back at home, their father realised that his children had gone into the wood. He was really worried and gave me a call to see if I could help look for them. He was right to be worried, because even though the house was scrummy and delicious on the outside, inside lived an old witch. When she caught Hansel and Gretel eating her house, she came out and chased them. They needed to get home as fast as they could. But which way should they go? Hansel looked for the trail of breadcrumbs that he had scattered, but they were gone. The birds had eaten them all. They had no idea which path to take. Luckily, I spotted them from my spoonmobile. They jumped on and we flew high into the air away from the Wicked Witch. Hooray! When we got home, Hansel and Gretel said sorry to their father. They had learned their lesson and from now on would only play where it was safe, in the garden. 
Then we all had a big feast with some of the bread and cake from the witch's house. Little Cook to the Rescue once again! That was a great adventure. It was, but Hansel and Gretel should never have left the garden. They went off without telling a grown-up. Way! I don't think they'll go off again, though, Ben. Now, what can we cook for Hansel and Gretel? I know! Big Cook's Big Cookery Book! Of course! The Big Cookery Book! There's recipes for everything in there! And where do we look for things to cook? In the book! In the book! In Big Cook's Book! Perfect! A vegetable house. This looks just like Hansel and Gretel's house in the wood. It does! It's even got a green door like Hansel and Gretel's front door. <laughs> oh! OK, Little Cook, you read out the ingredients and I'll see if we've got them. OK, let's see. We're going to need ready rolled puff pastry. Ready rolled puff pastry over in the freezer. Here we are. Yep, got the puff pastry small. Egg and milk. Egg and milk in the fridge. Egg and milk, yep. Fresh vegetables. Any we like, Ben. OK, let's see what we've got then. Oh, we've got munge too. Uh, baby corn cobs, carrots, pop them on there. What else have we got? Oh, cherry tomatoes, I love these. We've got, oh yes, here we go, courgette. Broccoli, and I think there's a red pepper there. I'll grab that. Here we go. Red pepper. Yep. Lentils. Yep, a tin of lentils. Water. Get that from the tap. Here we are. And curry powder. Oh, curry powder. Yes, there we go. Fantastic. Here we are, small. Everything we need for the recipe. Oh, curry powder. It's only in a small jar, but it's got lots of different ingredients in it, small. With really interesting names like uh, uh, cardamom and turmeric. Oh. <laughs> cardamom and turmeric. What lovely names, Ben. Hey, why don't you whiz off and find out all about curry powder, little cook, and I'll get everything ready. That's a great idea, Ben. See you later. <laughs> hey, why don't you come along too? Whoosh! Go small, go small, whiz away! I wonder what he'll see today. This is the right place. This lady is going to make some curry powder. She's using lots of different spices. The spices are heated up on the stove. She's using cardamom and turmeric. Listen carefully. The spices are popping and hissing. The spices have a wonderful smell. Spices are used to flavour and colour food. They come in lots of different shapes and colours. Now the spices have to be ground up into a powder using this pestle and mortar. Look! The spices are now ground into a powder. That was clever. Mmm, it smells amazing. Bye. There we are, everything ready. Way! I'm back! That was brilliant, Ben. I saw curry powder being made using lots of different spices. <laughs> Ooh! And you got there and back without getting lost. Oh, yes. I never get lost on my trusty spoonmobile. <laughs> I can see everything way up in the sky. <laughs> it's when I'm down on the ground that I get lost. Everything's too big and I'm too small. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't wander off now, little cook. I need your help. We're all ready, so take a look. And we will show you how to cook. The jelly boats and pirates go, princess pea pies, carrot cakes and fruity smiles, and envelope surprise. We love our cafe and we love to cook. We have a fantastic recipe book. He is big cook and he is small. 
friends in our cafe, we cook for them all. When your tummy gets all rumbly, you're ready for a treat. You can make something delicious to eat. Have you cleaned the surfaces? Yes. Have you washed your hands? Yes. All, All clean, clean and, and ready, ready to, to cook. cook. Do you remember the ingredients to Vegetable House? You do. There was puff pastry, 375 grams, ready rolled and defrosted. An egg, one. Milk, one tablespoon. Fresh vegetables. You can use any you like. Here's what we've done. Cherry tomatoes, cut in quarters for roof tiles. Carrots, cut into little squares for bricks. Broccoli, cut in half to make a little tree. Baby corn cobs, cut in slices to make little logs. Courgette, cut in a square shape to make the window. Red pepper, cut into triangles for the curtains. And mange too. These will be the door. Lentils, 100 grams, drained from the tin. Water, two tablespoons. And curry powder. One teaspoon of lovely smelling curry powder. Whoopee! Let's get started! The first thing we're going to do is preheat the oven to 220 degrees Celsius, gas mark 7. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do that bit for you, because remember, the oven is hot, hot, hot. Then, line a baking sheet with baking paper like this. And then what's next, Small? OK. Put your pastry on a lightly floured surface so it doesn't stick. Then you can use a blunt knife to cut out the shape of a house. OK. Here we go. Now, this is for Hansel and Gretel, so we're going to cut out Hansel and Gretel's house. There we are. Wow! You can make your vegetable house to look like Hansel and Gretel's, or even one that looks like your own! <laughs> right, next I'm going to whisk the egg and milk! Woohoo! Carefully lift the house shape onto a baking tray. There. Hee-hee-hee! <laughs> there you go, Ben. All done. Thanks, Small. Now, cut some pastry strips like this. There we are. And I can use the egg mixture to stick them down around the edge of the house. All the way round quickly. And the bottom. Pop this on. Around the edge, there we go. There we are. And always remember to wash your hands if you use raw egg. Now, Ben, paint your whole house with your egg mixture and then prick the pastry with a fork. <laughs> Here we are. Nearly done. Just a couple more. There. And now we can pop it into the oven for 10 minutes. So, oven gloves on, and over we go. On there, open up, and pop it in. And that's a job for your grown-up helper to do. I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. We need to steam our fresh vegetables, except for the tomatoes, in a steamer for about two to three minutes until they're just tender. If you don't have a steamer, you could always use a metal sieve over a saucepan. There we are. Pop the lid on. And make sure you get your grown-up helper to do this bit for you because the water is hot, hot, hot. Right, now in another pan, we can add our drained lentils, the water, and the curry powder, and mix it all up with a wooden spoon. Now, if you don't like curry powder, you don't have to put it in. Mmm, I love the smell of curry powder, Ben. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Curry powder tastes so yummy. <laughs> Every
everything is cooked and cooled now, so it's time to decorate the house. So, lentils first. On they go. And spread them out. Now our pastry edges, I'll make sure the lentil mixture stays in place. Hey, Ben, I've got a big red cherry tomato for you. Oops! <laughs> when all the lentils are nicely spread out, we can start to decorate the house with the vegetables. So, tomatoes first. This is going to be the roof. There we are. We're small. He hasn't got lost again, has he? <laughs> no, Ben. I was chasing the runaway tomato, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> well, never mind, Small. The roof's been tiled now. I've popped on the carrot bricks, the courgette window, and now the red pepper curtains. There we go. Oh, it looks just like Hansel and Gretel's house. <laughs> it does. It's all finished now. We've got Monge 2 as the door, a little broccoli tree, Slices of baby corn cob as chopped trees, and that's it. Hansel and Gretel's vegetable house. Is it ready, Ben? It is small, so one vegetable house coming through. <laughs> Ooh, there, all done. So what do we do now? Can we play? Not yet. Time to clean and put away. Hooray! Wash, wipe, scrub and clean, make the kitchen sparkle and gleam. My name's Ben. And my name's Small. We've got the cleanest kitchen of all. <laughs> Tidy all the bits and bobs, the things that help us do our job. Ingredients well put away, ready for use another day. Pots and pans will start to smell, if we don't wash them really well. And now it's clear, let's all smile, we'll be finished in a little while. Aha, here comes the plates. Oh, yes. And it looks like Hansel and Gretel enjoyed their vegetable house, Small. Look, they've left a note. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Let's see, shall we? It says, Dear Big Cook Ben and Little Cook Small, the vegetable house looked just like our little house, and it tasted delicious. Woohoo! We don't want Small to keep getting lost, so we've sent him this from Hansel and Gretel. Oh, look, Small. I wonder what's in here. Oh, let me see, Ben. Oh. Oh, wow! They've given me some blue pebbles. <laughs> oh, yes. The birds ate Hansel's trail of breadcrumbs. But they wouldn't eat pebbles. <laughs> I'll give them a try. Oh, look. <laughs> do, 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 do. Don't go too far, Small. I've left a trail of pebbles, Ben. And when I want to come back, I'll follow the trail. <laughs> See you soon. See you soon. Way. Hey. Woohoo! Look at me. Welcome to our cafe. Big cook, little cook. We'll cook forever. 